so the next question I got was, how detailed should my invention disclosure form be? So most everybody that has some sort of patent process somehow comes about getting a form to allow capturing of the innovation and really staging it for evaluation and then perhaps for the patent prosecutor to use for drafting, right? And these forms come in all shapes and sizes. I've seen forms that are 10 pages long. I've seen forms that are much shorter than that. I had one client in, in the, the, the cloud storage space and his challenge to me was to get a one page form. It was very hard to do, but I came up with a one page form. And with the simpler forms, and this executive's point to me was that developers just don't like filling out forms. And if you give them a 50 page form, you'll have zero engagement. If you give them a one page form, you're gonna have maximum engagement. So, um, when we designed the form, the initial form at Triangle IP, that's what we did, is we went with simple over complex. Uh, so our form is very simple. It's more like a one-page form. And at the very least, you need to have you know, a title for the innovation. Sometimes there's tracking numbers. The attorneys will call them docket numbers, um, some sort of numbering scheme so you uh, can easily identify the, the particular the particular idea that you're talking about. So that, the title, um, a description of the innovation. And in our simplest form, we just have one field for that. Um, and that could include a lot of things, and a lot of things that would be in the very long form. So really, um, the, the problem that motivated the innovation the solution, what other people have done in that space, um, different variations, um, all that stuff can go in that narrative. But it gives enough information so that the evaluators that are determining whether or not to expend budget on um, protecting that idea, the evaluators can give them a, a flavor of what the innovation is and then ultimately that package would go out to um, the drafter, the patent prosecutor who would be drafting your patent application. And what I like to do is have a, a very short form like that, but the, the availability to put attachments on there. And I'll often get this where somebody will come to me and they'll say, well, you know, should we spend a lot of time writing this up? And I, I, I don't think that's time well spent. Innovators are busy people. The most innovative people are extremely busy within the enterprise and the time is very valuable. What I would rather have is that they put together a brief description and then ultimately if it gets approved, the patent prosecutor would sit down with that individual or that group of inventors and they would get all the detail that they need. But if you've produced a paper, like a white paper, or something like that that describes it, or maybe some diagrams, or an engineering document, absolutely, there's no good reason not to um, include that with the disclosure. Um, but but really, all you need is a brief uh, a brief description of it. And then the other things that I like to get are how important people within the enterprise think it is, right? Um, and I just use a simple scale of one to 10 to determine um, that, and it's very subjective. Another thing that often gets asked, and it typically get at, gets asked from the patent prosecutor is how likely are we to get a patent? What's the patentability of this thing? And that's really a guesswork uh, Triangle is working on the algorithms to make it much more scientific um, and we should have that available in the next version of the tool. Um, but some sort of indication on whether we can ever get a patent because that's not necessarily a question that your patent prosecutor wants to answer because 
you know, a, a case that's very unlikely to allow requires lots of argument. And if you think about their business model, they get paid by the hour typically. They'll make more money on a hopeless case, right? So knowing before you approve an idea, what is the likelihood you're going to get a patent out the other end, an asset in your portfolio? Uh, so knowing those two things, how important it is, how likely you are to get it. And then if there's any deadlines, sometimes um, there's an urgency to it, and that urgency may be driven by legal issues or competitive issues or any number of things. But just kind of putting down a date so that people know, hey, look, somebody's got to look at this or get working on this in advance of this deadline uh, so that we don't uh, lose our rights to the public domain or you know, we file the patent before we release the product or product was released nine months ago and we got to file it before the one year anniversary or whatever, right? Soft or hard deadline, just a date. And that's kind of the simplest version of the form. But let me go into um, some other things that people like to include in there uh, and things that you might want to have. So um, uh, people will often, and you'll see this in older forms and really not super important today, but they'll have witnesses or stuff like that. And when we had a first to invent system rather than a first to file system, you don't have to know what those terms mean, that became really important, right? Conception, they'll ask about conception and reduction of practice and all that stuff. Today, the law has been very much simplified, so it's just the first person to file is the person who's 99% likely to be awarded with the patent right out the other end. So all that stuff becomes less relevant, so you, but you'll see that in a lot of forms where they're trying to figure out that. They're also trying to figure out some of these other things with regard to the deadline, right? Is, you know, just having a deadline, uh, you know, uh, what, what a lot of the forms will do is they'll ask you, you know, was this disclosed to others, right? Because in the U.S. that starts a one-year clock by which you have to, um, after your public disclosure, file your patent. Um, they might ask, um, when does it plan to be released? Again, they're trying to get at that deadline issue. Um, they might ask about things like, uh, was anybody outside the company involved with this idea? Um, you know, because there can be joint rights and sharing of rights, and those patents are kind of messy where they're jointly owned. Um, other questions might be, you know, describe the prior art. Right, because it gives the drafter an idea of what the innovation is with respect to um, what other people have done before so they can help formulate the claims and that sort of thing. Um, they might ask, you know, to you, for you to even list the references that are associ associated with the prior art. So that, you know, because the duty to disclose in the U.S., they have to submit that sort of thing. So a lot of those questions have to do with framing it up better and honestly making it more, more efficient for the patent attorney to do their drafting and do their prosecution. But it's not so much important with regard to whether you should go forward with the idea or not, whether you should expend budget on it. So I generally leave that out of the form, but a lot of people have that. And of course, the more you can fill out in these forms, like if you had um, your innovators happy to do these very long forms and fill out all the questions, you can probably get your patent work done more less expensively because that person is gonna sit down with all the information. The problem that I find with those longer forms is, is unless the inventors are very sophisticated and well-trained, they just don't know how to fill them out, right? And you'll find that they just stop engaging because they, you know, you ask what prior art is, right? I mean, no one knows what that term means unless you're in the industry, it's just what other people have done. Um, but they may see a question like that and say, ah, I was kind of reluctant to engage with the patent process. Now I feel intimidated by it. So uh, what will happen sometimes is either the, the drafter or maybe an internal person will help people fill out that form. Um, uh, and I even, a lot of my clients on the one-page form hire me to talk to them 
uh, and talk about their innovation, brainstorm it out, and then I'll go and fill out the forms, right? And of course, to hire counsel to go about doing that is expensive. So any of that stuff that you can do on your own, the more information you can provide, the more questions you can answer, uh, the easier it is going to be for people down the line. But you have to appreciate that it, the complexity uh, slows down the engagement with the program. So the more complex you have it and the, and the more questions you have, the less engagement you have. So at any rate, I hope that answers the question. If you have further or follow-up questions, put them in the comments below. Or if you have another topic you want me to cover, put them in the message and, and put them below or message us. Um, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and like this video if you found it useful. Thank you.